Hi, I'm Brandon Grant, Sales and Marketing Director here at Quoteworks. In this video, we're going to walk through how to set up the QuickBooks desktop integration to easily and seamlessly export your documents from Quoteworks directly to QuickBooks desktop. The Quoteworks integration includes the ability to export any document in Quoteworks as an estimate, sales order, or invoice into QuickBooks desktop. If an item on a document does not exist in QuickBooks, Quoteworks will prompt you to create it. If a customer does not exist, Quoteworks will create that customer for you also. The Quoteworks integration currently supports QuickBooks Pro, Premier, and Enterprise. In order to set up and use this integration, you'll need to be running Quoteworks Professional or Corporate Editions. All right, let's get started. To set up the integration, you'll first need to have Quoteworks open and logged in as an administrator or user with admin rights. You'll also need to have QuickBooks open and running as well. Once those two programs are open, in Quoteworks, click on Tools, Options, find the Accounting tab and click on that tab. At the very top, you'll see the QuickBooks integration option. Make sure your link type is set to QuickBooks Desktop. Additionally, there's an option for estimates, invoices, sales orders integration. Selected accounting integration, make sure this is also set to QuickBooks. And finally, if you're going to have Quoteworks create purchase orders for you in QuickBooks, make sure you have QuickBooks set as your purchase order integration. If it's not set, you can change the options by clicking on the drop down menu. Once you have these three options set, you're ready to start setting up the link between Quoteworks and QuickBooks Desktop. So let's go ahead and click on the Setup Link button. When you click on that link, this will open up the QuickBooks Interactive Link Setup window. This Setup window is comprised of five various tabs. We're going to go through each tab and the options available on them. The first tab is the Transaction tab, and you'll see we have the QuickBooks General tab selected. This is where we're going to set some of the default settings for the integration. For transaction type, this is the document type that Quoteworks will create in QuickBooks. So if you want Quoteworks to create an invoice, estimate, or sales order, you make your selection here. For our example, I'm going to go ahead and select invoice, but you can select whichever document is best for your organization. The next option is the invoice and estimate number. You can choose to continue using the QuickBooks auto numbering, where Quoteworks will just automatically fill in the QuickBooks numbering sequence, or you can start using the Quoteworks document number instead. There's no wrong answer here, just use the one that makes most sense for your company. For the date of the transaction, we're going to use either the document date or the date exported. No wrong answers here, just choose the one that matches best for how your company does and reports on your documents. If you'd like to add a customer message, you can select the default option here. And then we're getting down to how Quoteworks is going to handle specific items when the item is created or sent over to QuickBooks. So if the item does exist, you have the option to update the cost and the price, or you can choose not to update it in the QuickBooks product list. For our example, I'm gonna say go ahead and update the cost price. If the terms do not exist, you can be prompted to create them or you can just have Quoteworks automatically create them in QuickBooks for you. For our example, I'm gonna go ahead and select prompt to create. If the ship via does not exist, if you want Quoteworks to create it or prompt to create, I'm just gonna have it created automatically. And then if the customer does exist, do you want Quoteworks to update it with any changes? So if the address has changed, if the company name has changed, anything like that, do you want Quoteworks to update it? If not, choose do not update. And then finally, we have our memo field. This is just adding a memo to the QuickBooks document, notifying you that the document was imported from Quoteworks, and it provides you with the Quoteworks document number and also the document date that it was exported. If you want to make any changes to this memo field, you can select a various macro, you can remove macros, it's up to you. So there's some flexibility with adjusting those settings. But for our example, we're going to go ahead and leave that as is. Purchase order integration you'll see is already set to QuickBooks since we had selected it previously. And then the PO numbering, since we're going to be using the QuickBooks auto numbering for our invoice and estimates, we'll go ahead and use the same thing for our PO numbering. The two checkbox under the PO numbering field, sync received items to QuickBooks and sync received payments to QuickBooks, does exactly that. When you are using purchase orders from Quoteworks to QuickBooks, if you want Quoteworks to automatically sync the received items to QuickBooks when the items are marked as received in Quoteworks, 
go ahead and check this checkbox. If you also, when payments are received in QuoteWorks, if you want those payments automatically synced into QuickBooks, you'll check this checkbox. If you're using QuickBooks payments for receiving payments with Quote Valet, you'll actually wanna uncheck this because you don't need the payment to be sent over a second time since it's coming through your QuickBooks payments account. Invoice estimate class, if you wanna set a default, you can do that. Same thing as if you want to retrieve from a specific QuoteWorks field, maybe a custom field, you can do that as well. For our example, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this blank. We're now gonna move over to the next sub tab on the transaction setup to the QuickBooks more. This is if you want QuoteWorks to mark the invoice default for print later or email later, print later or email later for the sales order, for the estimates or for the purchase order. So if you have any preferences or specifics that you'd like to set here for your company, you can do that or you can just use the default settings or you can leave them unchecked. And then finally, the last tab on the transaction setup is going to be the QuoteWorks tab. This is where you specify what documents you want exported over to QuickBooks. So if you'll see here on my window, I have a QuickBooks icon. When I click on that icon, that'll open up a window of documents that are ready to be exported from QuoteWorks to QuickBooks. Here I'm setting the criteria. So in our example, and the most common setting is going to be, we're only looking for orders because typically you would not export quotes over to QuickBooks and the doc status is equal to open. So it means it's an order that's still open. Once the document has been exported, QuoteWorks will change the document status to exported so it no longer appears in that list. You can change these settings and defaults to whatever you'd like. This is just the recommended setting and the most typical settings, but you can adjust as needed. But what we're really trying to limit is only displaying documents that are actually being exported over to QuickBooks. Okay, let's move on to the sales tax tab. The sales tax tab has quite a few settings. You have an option to selecting that you do not charge sales tax in QuickBooks. So if you don't, you can go ahead and check this and move on to the next tab. However, if you do charge sales tax, you'll be able to select from your default tax item for all estimates and invoices that are set up in QuickBooks. You can use the tax item from QuickBooks customer if they exist, otherwise we'll use the default tax item. And then we can also, with this checkbox set, use the default that's set but prompt for selection. So if you want the ability to change it, you can. I do recommend no matter which option you choose having this checkbox set because it gives you the flexibility to change it on the fly if you need to. Your sales tax codes, taxable and non-taxable will be set here. These are pulling from QuickBooks directly from those fields. So let's go ahead and click on our mappings tab. So we're gonna start on our general tab here and the general tab covers how you want to handle QuickBooks sales reps ID mappings. In QuoteWorks, we use a full username. So typically if someone's username is gonna be their first name and last name. QuickBooks uses initials for the sales reps. So if you want to map your users to your QuickBooks users, you'll simply click on setup and then go through and map your QuoteWorks sales rep to your QuickBooks sales rep here. If you wanna leave it blank, you can do that as well. Just simply check the checkbox. So again, no wrong answers, just choose the option that's best for your company. The second option on this tab is going to be the transaction bill to mapping. This is the bill to address and contact information we're going to use in QuickBooks. Typically this is pulled from the QuoteWorks document sold to, but we do have the option to pull it from the QuoteWorks bill to instead if you need to. So if you wanna make that change, you can. Okay, let's go to the items sub tab here. So the next one is going to be very important. This is going to be how we handle creating items in QuickBooks, specifically setting part numbers. By default, in QuoteWorks, we use the manufacturer part number to write over to the item name. This is the unique identifier for an item in QuoteWorks, and this is the unique identifier for an item in QuickBooks. That's why you're not able to change it. However, not every company uses manufacturer part numbers. Most of you do, but if you don't, you can click on the drop down and then change the option here. So if you wanna use the vendor part number instead or an internal part number or one of the custom text fields that it's gonna have a part number, you can do that. When you select one of those other options, you'll have the option to auto-generate a new part number if the QuoteWorks field is left blank. So if for some reason you select internal part number and you try to export an item over to QuickBooks and the item field is left blank, then you have the option of not auto-generating a part number or going ahead and auto-generating one using a macro or auto-generating using one based on the item type. 
Highly recommend selecting one of these two options because if an item is not mapped, if the mapping is blank for the item, then it won't actually carry over to QuickBooks and it'll actually stop the export from happening until you resolve that issue. So definitely recommend if you're not gonna be using the default and the recommended option of manufacturer part number, go ahead and make your selection and then choose whether you want it to be based off a of macro, so maybe off the description of the item or something like that. You can see a list of those here by clicking on the drop down. So if you wanted to use off maybe the manufacturer, you could do that. You also have the option of using it based on the item type and you can map your item types here with the auto generation macro there. So a lot of flexibility. I'm gonna go ahead and change mine back to our manufacturer part number. The next options are going to be the specific fields from Quoteworks that you wanna map. So the description field in QuickBooks, you want to pull from the description field in QuoteWorks. If you want to use one of the custom memo fields instead, you can do that. Uh, that's highly unusual, but the option is there if you need it. PO description field, same thing. Typically, that's going to come from the description field in QuoteWorks, but again, you have options to pull from one of the custom fields instead. PO item macros, same thing. You can add QuoteWorks macros that can be used for the PO items. Discount charge, subtotal, and shipping items. These are specific items in QuoteWorks that may not already have a mapping for them in QuickBooks. So if you click on the drop down, you'll see you have the option to create it in QuickBooks now or select from a previously created one. Whichever your settings you choose, that's fine. Just make sure you have those mapped. So we're going to go ahead and just use our default settings here. But you see you have the option of selecting from existing ones or being able to create a new one. And then when we're creating items in QuickBooks, if you want to map custom fields between QuoteWorks and QuickBooks, you want to click on the Map Item Custom Fields. This will let you see which QuickBooks custom fields you have available and which QuoteWorks field you want to map that to. So you'd be able to select most likely a custom text field in QuoteWorks, but it doesn't have to be. It could be from one of the other fields available, so, but you do have that option. For your grouped items, when we have grouped or bundled items in QuoteWorks, we can send them over to QuickBooks in two separate ways. We can send it over as a single rolled up item that's taxable or non-taxable, so you can adjust that. Or if you want the individual line items sent over to QuickBooks, you'll want to leave this unchecked. This is the most common setting for most users is to leave this option unchecked so that each individual line item is sent over to QuickBooks. If you have a preferred vendor set up in QuickBooks, we can have that auto selected. Otherwise, you'll just be prompted to select your vendor for the items when exported to QuickBooks. Next is the Payments tab. The Payments tab is where we can map our payment methods from QuoteWorks to QuickBooks. So if you're using Quote Valet and you're receiving payments via Quote Valet, you want to make sure you set up these mappings. You'll see on the left hand side, we have a list of our Quote Valet payment methods. And then on the right hand side, we have our QuickBooks payment methods. So you just want to make sure when you select one of the options that you select the proper option for each payment option. That way it's going to carry over into QuickBooks properly. Luckily for me, all of mine are set, so I can go ahead and hit OK. But if yours are not mapped, you'll want to make sure you map those over. That way, when the payment comes from QuoteWorks and is exported to QuickBooks, the payment is going to match properly in QuickBooks. Same thing with mapping deposit accounts. You will want to go ahead and map our deposit accounts. And if there's any that are not set, you'll want to go ahead and make sure you map that as well. And then we can also set a default. So basically if one's not mapped, we can use this default setting instead. And the same thing with accounts receivable, we can set our default accounts receivable as well. And then finally, our custom fields. If you want to map estimate header custom fields or estimate item custom fields, you can click on this option and you'll see the fields that are available from QuickBooks and what's available in QuoteWorks. And you can go through and you can do that for the different document types for your estimates, invoices, sales orders, or purchase orders. Let's move on to our defaults tab here. The defaults are for your new items. When you are exporting a document from QuoteWorks to QuickBooks Desktop, QuoteWorks will create for you any items that do not currently exist. To help speed up that process and to make sure everything's coming over accurately, you have the option to set default item types. So if you are typically quoting out mostly services, you can set the default as service, as inventory, or as non-inventory. So for our example, since we sell mostly non-inventory parts, we're gonna set that as the default. Now, just because this is the default setting doesn't mean that this is the only setting you can use. 
when you're exporting a document over to QuickBooks from QuoteWorks and a new item is being created, you'll be prompted to be able to change and make those adjustments as necessary on a per item basis. These are just the default settings that'll be used for you to help speed things up. So for our inventory items, we'll go ahead and just say this is going to be our cost of goods account, our asset account, we're just gonna choose the first ones here, and our income accounts. And then same thing, non-inventory, our purchase and sold, we'll say, you can say yes, and you can set your expense account and your sales account and then same thing with your service items, are they purchased and sold? If you wanna say yes, then you'll be able to choose the expense account and same thing, the sales account. If you're unsure of any of these default settings, go ahead and speak with your accountant on which defaults you should have set. You can leave them blank as well, so if you wanna come back and fill this out later, you can. It's not required field, just helps speed things up when you're exporting documents. And then finally, on the items tab, this is where you can connect directly to the QuickBooks item list in QuoteWorks. So if you want to be able to pull items from QuickBooks directly into QuoteWorks, you can do that by checking this box here. This will allow you to search and select items from the QuickBooks product list directly into QuoteWorks. Once you've made all your settings and mappings, go ahead and just take a quick view of all of your tabs. Make sure you have all the settings the way you'd like and go ahead and save your settings by clicking OK. And then one final time, go ahead and click OK to save your settings in QuoteWorks. And that's it. To start using the integration between QuoteWorks and QuickBooks, you can click on your QuickBooks icon on your toolbar. This will open up that export to QuickBooks window that we talked about, and you should see your settings of display unexported orders and doc status equal to open. So this is showing only my open orders available, and I can select if I wanna do one or more documents and start exporting them over to QuickBooks. You might want to create a test document in QuoteWorks first and then export it to QuickBooks to make sure that everything is going over the way you'd like it to. If something is not going over properly during your test, simply go back into the setup and adjust your settings as necessary. For more information, or if you'd like some written instructions, please visit the QuickBooks desktop setup help file topic in the QuoteWorks help file, or feel free to give us a call or send us an email. Thanks for watching.